Aries, hi, welcome to my channel. So today we've got a timeless reading, whatever you're drawn to the videos when it's for you. Uh, no particular subject, we're going to do um, uh, tech and energy, what we know, what we don't know, recent past advice and potential outcome. At the end, there'll be an opportunity um, for an extended where we'll dive in deeper. You can watch this for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, North Node, or if any of those planets are currently transiting your first house, this could be for you. Once again, thank you for the continued support in whatever format that comes, whether it's liking a video, subscribing to the channel if you haven't done that already, please do. It's the easiest and fastest way to grow the channel. Very much appreciated. Um, thank you, Patreon members, all those that purchase private reads, extended by me, coffees, donations. It um, helps me to continue doing this. Cross watch is your modern welcome, and all the information is in the description box below. Okay. We're going to get to the nitty gritty today, Aries. We are using the Toff deck. The Toff does not mince its words. Let's see what we've got. Two more. Okay. Oof. What a start. The Ten of Swords. It is ruin. It is an ending. It's the sun in Gemini, um, which is coming up, obviously. I mean, I know this is a timeless reading, but um, I really ought to stop saying that because everything seems to be astrologically in line when I do my readings. So we are approaching uh, the sun in Gemini. Um, I kind of feel like it's putting the final nail in the coffin with something. What do we know? What don't we know? Recent past. Advice, potential outcome. Interesting. Are you a reader yourself? You could be a reader yourself. Uh, we have the Hierophant, which is where we currently are in Taurus season. The Eight of Discs, the Queen of Wands, the Ace of Wands, Two of Wands, Five of Cups, Three of Pentacles. Knight of Swords, which is the King of Swords, Princess of Discs, Ace of Discs, Five of Discs, King of Pentacles. Okay, um, something's coming to an end. I almost feel like there's possibly an energy here of... Th there could be jealousy around you, there could be so many different aspects here, but something's coming to an end. It's time for... Um, it's time for clear vision, clairvoyance po possibly for some of you. Uh, you're going to be seeing something extremely clearly. So we've got the Ten of Swords, which like I say is ruined. What we're aware of is the sun. Now the sun in this deck is, it does speak of clairvoyance, it, it speaks of illumination. Um, it speaks of seeing things extremely, extremely clearly. We, we are approaching summer. Um, and interestingly, with the Ten of Swords indicating the um, the Sun in Gemini, but this could be towards the end of Sun in Gemini, because if we look at the Sun card here, I mean, for you guys that are uh, not from the UK, uh, you might not understand what I'm saying here, but this kind of looks like the hill for Glastonbury Tor, where they, it's the heart chakra of, of Earth, and it's also... Um, where there's a big summer solstice every year, they, they, there's lots of celebrations. Summer solstice is obviously the 21st, which is the last day of, well, it's the cusp, it's the last day or the beginning of cancer season. So this could be something that's approaching uh, in terms of a time frame. And interestingly, I've never noticed that before, right at the bottom of the sun card is a crab. I don't know if you can see that clearly. Um, indicating cancer season. Something has been illuminated. There could be some sort of endings, some sort of um, jealousies. There's something that's striking me here that needs to be... I don't know. I almost feel like you need to let go of something here, especially if you're a reader yourself or some sort of clairvoyant or um, have the ability to, to, to see clearly. What we're not aware of is the Five of Wands. Now, the Five of Wands is strife. The Five of Wands is uh, conflict. It is internal conflict, it's external conflict, it's jealousies. It's a lot of um, 
different, different things. In fact, this is reminding me of Ernest Hemingway's quote, um, there is nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. So stop comparing yourself. You are your own diamond in the rough. You are your own, nobody else is like you. Um, sorry if you saw that, I just spat a little bit. Never mind. Um, nobody else is like you. You are very unique and you need to accept your uniqueness. Other people won't understand you and that's fine. In the recent past, we have the tower. Something's shaken up here. The Ten of Swords with the tower with the Five of Wands and the Sun. It, 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 I almost feel like it's like a trauma bond uh, because we've just got such polarities here. We've got this pure joy and happiness then pure ruin. Uh, it's kind of like hot and cold cycles and it's something that's repeated in your life and you need to recognise this and you need to recognise who is causing it. Um, because this hot and cold cycle is sending your brain and your nervous system into absolute chaos. You know, we've got um, oxytocin and uh, cortisol kind of making up a juicy cocktail in your body here uh, and it's creating havoc. And that's what a trauma bond is. It's, it's your brain trying to keep you safe, but also when you're fed this sort of hot energy of, of, uh, of a lot of attention and it's taken away from you, you need to recognise the people that are causing this and choose peace and step away from it. Your advice is the Wheel of Fortune. Now the Wheel of Fortune speaks of um, breaking the cycle because this is a cycle this is something that's repetitive uh, perhaps for some of you you might be this person you might be the hot and cold energy and you need to take a look at how this is affecting others we've all done it i've done it myself we've you know you've, you've been hot and cold with people um there needs to there needs to be some sort of acceptance here and, and uh, res you know taking responsibility for the majority of you i see this as someone that's in your environment not just someone it could be a lot of people that are causing this sort of um, dramatic um, up and down energy your outcome is the moon so we have the sun and the moon here talking of the eclipses we had the eclipse in your sign which is merging with the nodes. The nodes are in, they're gonna be moving into in July, <laughs> the Cancer Crab again, is um, is moving into your sign. The North Node is moving into Aries, South Node is moving into um, um, Libra. Current North Node is Taurus. I almost feel like you are ready to step into a more significant role come July. And the universe is asking you to prepare for that. But in preparing for it, we've got to let a lot of things go. We've got to um, possibly not wanting to suffocate and know the answers. Like I say, if, you, if you're a reader yourself, this because um, the Wheel of Fortune and the Moon for me is uh, uh, having a very good knack of predicting the future. So, I, and especially with the Sun card being here of, of maybe clairvoyance. S surrendering is not weakness. It's actually a superpower. Um, it means giving up trying to have it all figured out. Things are changing. Flowing with life is, is, is a major catalyst for abundance here. And I feel like when you trust that life happens for you and not to you, things are going to be very, very smooth. For a lot of you, there's a major frustration within you uh, because we have Jupiter here. Jupiter has been in your sign for the full year, moving into Taurus in about five days a lot of you have gathered a lot of frustration based on possibly your finances haven't improved where people always say jupiter gives you all this benefit in finances when jupiter moves into taurus it's in your second house of earnings so from next week till next may you've got jupiter expanding your second house self-worth money Venus ruled second house, beauty, money, um, 
love all these things are going to be highlighted for the next year but ultimately i think this reading is about letting go of the past accepting what is going with the flow not holding on to a possible vision of the future that you believe um just just be flexible <laughs> okay i want to see where because obviously we've got um uh, the Hierophant here being the North Node. I just want to see where you guys, the Emperor is. For when it goes into your sign. six of wands and we have lust which is strength um, this is you stepping into a major major role Leo energy is all about front and centre and this is you front and centre in the north node success abound interesting uh, ace of swords clarity coming this is for me a sense of No longer taming the lion. You are the lion. Okay? So, in your extended, we will look at um, where this sort of um, front and centre is uh, is being directed. We'll mirror this reading and uh, see what we get. We'll be using the Osho Zen Tarot, I believe, today. So, we'll see what comes out. If you can join me, fantastic. If not, let me know if this resonates. We have Sun in Gemini. We have Leo. We have... Um, Saturn in Leo, we have Aries and Scorpio, Sagittarius, Cancer Pisces, Taurus, Sun in Virgo, Mars in Aries, Mars in Scorpio, Mars in Capricorn, Mercury in Taurus. Interesting as well, um, just to give you another little boost when it comes to your finances everything is in its is working out you know the, the jupiter in your second house is going to be very very beneficial because if we look at the moon and the hierophant at the bottom of the deck um in the moonology moon in taurus is prosperity lies ahead okay see you soon bye